And I would like to welcome everyone to the 64th episode of Money Trees. I've talked about what it means to be a visionary, and we've all talked at length about what it takes to build community. Today, I am joined by an incredible artist, someone who is constantly sharing their creations, their visions, and ideas while uplifting those around them in marvelous ways. It is my pleasure to have Carissa Visionary here with us today. How are you feeling today? Thank you so much for that beautiful introduction. Um, I feel amazing. Um, I want to say it's just a very busy day. My life has been really a lot going on, and I'm trying to find this just a cool balance for real of, you know, being at peace with myself and still being productive and just a nice little holistic balance. You know, I'm about the holistics. How are you? I'm good. I'm well grateful that you are joining us in the midst of hectic day. I had one as well yesterday. Uh, some people may notice that we are on 64, not 63, but that was a conversation for another day. Um, yo, never too late. I want to I wanna start there. So I normally don't have music intros at the beginning of the episodes just to avoid any like DMCA issues, but I'm going to have to have at least the outro of this record because people, the instrumentation is beautiful, but the lyrics and the story of this song is one of my favorite of any record I've come across recently. Not Web3, not NFT related, just in general. You know, you you have in the description that this is us entering your sonic universe. And I think that was a great, great way to kind of encapsulate how that felt. Going in between the bars to the vocals, the layers that you added in there. But more than anything, it stood out how vulnerable you were with that song. And I related to that just so, so much. Can you talk about what led you to the creating that record in particular? Wow, thank you so much. I really appreciate that you appreciate that song so much. <clears throat> it's really from the heart. Um, and yeah, I would say that this song was born out of a frustration of just not being where I wanted to be in life. And it took a while to like fully give birth to the the song. It really felt like a whole journey because I I started the the production like the chords like a while ago, 2014. Then I started writing lyrics like 2017, and then I just brought it home in like February 2022. So it's like this long process, and it wasn't necessarily, I didn't intend for it to be that long. It was just, you know, life doing things and feeling and growing and experiencing, which is like the, I guess that's like the negative space of creativity like you gotta live life and experience stuff so to have context and to just have substance to create from um so yeah the song the inspiration was just like asking deep questions to myself like what is my life what is the point of my life like what is this all about you know am i living with purpose passion intention am i feeling fulfilled and, you know, just there's been moments where I felt like I've had regrets. And, you know, but at the end of the day, I'm still alive. If I still got breath in my body, I still got words on my tongue. Like I said in the song, like, it's never too late. And that was just a very special moment for, from me to myself. It's like I, I delivered messages from the past into my future self because I started it in 2014. That's when I first started making beats and, and production. And I was just barely getting into songwriting and, and being confident in my voice, let alone being confident in, in like who I am. Like that was also around the time where I was like, I realized that like, I love women, like the real kind. And so it was also like, just a big like shift of, seeing myself deeper and as far as the sonic universe is really just inside of myself i feel like i 
not I feel like, but the universe is within. You know, there's a lot of traveling that I do within myself and my meditations and my visualization and my thought process and connecting with my energy centers. And, you know, when I do this connection with myself, like I see things, I hear things, I feel things. Certain inspiration comes from, comes for songs or films or whatever. So, you know, just exploring. That's what's going on here. You know, songs bring life to emotions and messages, as you said, that sometimes it's very difficult to express otherwise. And this song in particular, when I first heard it, really made me reflect. And that resonated with me. Like that, having to stop and kind of take a second as I was listening to this record, always feels special when you're listening to an artist's work for the first time. And you touched on kind of your start and what got you or how the song came about. This record going out on catalog, what was your experience as a musician who's been creating for a long time? Or let me, you know, let me rephrase that. (laughs) What made you want to put this record out through catalog? Well, I just kind of jumped into music NFTs in December and my first Um, song, Everything Divine. I just kind of threw it out there. I didn't even know that I couldn't put my cover art on there. (laughs) So I like minted a song and I was like, okay, where do I put my cover art? And I was like, oh, you can't do that. And I'm like, what? Um, So I put it on there and I was like, okay, whatever. It's not, you know, like the hype of it. Like I thought I was going to throw that shit up there and it was just going to sell immediately. Like it's lit. Like, and it wasn't like that. So as I'm, you know, just going on progressing I'm you know discovering the different platforms and you know I see that catalog well I learned about catalog through looking on Zora and the ones that with the album with the cover art are the ones that came from catalog so I was like oh I need to get on catalog but you know it's a process wait list to get on there and um it just it wasn't going like I wasn't I didn't have the the name in these web three streets so it wasn't like expediting it like that uh, so then you know one day I went onto this float live vote show and I submitted my song and people voted for it and they liked it and I got mentioned on catalog so it's lit and it's you know, lit Uh, yeah so yeah a lot of momentum has picked up since there people underestimate the realities of the work needed to sell music nfts and i'm sure that it was a very valuable lesson for you to kind of come into the space and have those expectations be a little tapered because you learned what it would take and connecting with community i highlighted that you do that extremely well uh, a crowd favorite for sure amongst the lit NFT gang. I, I love everyone there. I, I got to give the lit gang another shout out. But um, mm-hmm. it's, I actually didn't know that you won the Float Live Vote Show. And yeah. I, I really rock with the Float team, love what they're doing in the city with Rocky and Jay Prob and just the IRL events. And when I talked to AJ and Hallway from, from there and they explained like, you know, there's – these kind of barriers to education or barriers even to entry on some of these platforms. And they wanted to give life to artists that may not be able to get through some of these barriers. I've gone on record saying my stance on some of the uh, um, exclusionary practices that exist in some of these music platforms. That's a conversation for another day, but shout out to float. Your name is definitely growing more buzz in these Web3 streets, as you say. Uh, What was, I I saw that you did a virtual performance. What was that like? Hold on, what you talking about? Are you talking about? uh, Oh, no, you go, you go. You talking about what, um, whatchamacallit? Uh, Jay Byrne? I didn't. Well, I, I was, was going to say, yeah, I'm like, hold on, hold on. Is this going to be the first uh, people? I, I'm, I, ah, excuse me. I've been trying to be on my Nardwar flow, 
digging deep into the archives, going in and seeing like, oh, okay, like what's some um, lesser talked about moments that my guests have had? Yes, I'm talking about with Jay Byrne, but I did not see any content from it. And so that is where oh. this question stems from. <clears throat> Got you. It was like, uh, it was just in a, it was in a Twitter space and it was cool. That was a really, really special moment because I, that was like the first time that people really like list not the first time people listen to my to my music but it was you know it was a twitter space it had a good amount of people in there i performed some stuff live just in the twitter space it was a you know twitter space concert it was cool um and i got really good feedback and like shortly after that i released a song on tezos um called no service and you know i got a few sales on that as well so it was just like okay so my my Genesis, <clears throat> sorry, at the time, like it was out, it didn't sell yet. And I was like, okay, I'm, I'm, I, like people would be like, oh, you're not here. <laughs> like this whole Web3 thing, like obviously we're also here for a bag because it's like if we weren't, we would just be on SoundCloud. Like it's obviously we care about our art and the integrity of it, but you know, there's financial opportunity. We got to eat, we got to live, we got to survive. Um, So, Yes, yeah, so that was a cool performance in a Twitter space. Met some cool people, got some momentum um, on Tezos first, and then later sold Never Too Late. And then the day after that, I sold my Genesis piece as well on Zora. So it was like just this full circle moment where the momentum was moving and everything's great, and I'm still in flow, and lots of great opportunities are coming to me, and I'm excited. It's lit, super lit. Yo, shout out to you. I think <laughs> that it can it can be easy to become discouraged in the space. And as made clear through your experience, you know, sometimes it, ha- it happens when it needs to. I know that you definitely believe in that with your practice and your outlook on the world. We can touch on that later. Mm-hmm. But you connected in the space. I think, you know, I go back and forth on virtual performances. And I did want to ask you more questions on that. But you brought up some ill points. So we'll leave that alone. Shout out to Twitter space. Uh, concerts, but you talked about being on Tezos and then being on Ethereum. I went to research and see, but I am pretty sure that your claim of being the first artist to sell a music NFT out of the island of Tobago is a real one. So another super, super, super amazing uh, achievement to have on your belt, just paving the way there. What's thank you so much for that? Oh, for sure, for sure. What's the conversation been like locally for you? We know that a lot of us connect, you know, worldwide and we're talking through Twitter and Telegram or any of or Discord. What have what have your IRL conversations been like about NFTs or have you even been able to have any where you're at? I've had a few. Um, it's honestly is not going like <laughs> at all. Um, uh, you know, like the education, well not like we're this is an educated place like we know stuff but like you know just crypto it's kind of mystified like what is that and like how like some there's definitely some people that are hip to like crypto trading bitcoin and like the, just the up and down nature of you know a security um but nfts like that's a that's no one really knows i tried to there's like one person that I've kind of explained stuff to. It's like he's also like from America. He's like from down here and America as well. So like he has certain like context and stuff, but like the community, it's not that big at all. I mean, I wouldn't even say there's much of a community. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I'm down to start it, but I just, I'm, I'm in, <laughs> there's a lot happening right now in my world. No, I get it. I get it. I feel like you were poised for sure to get into the NFT Web3 space after you were able to get a little active with the stimulus and (laughs) trade some options and make make that jump, which I think that's always really ill too, like when artists can put on that finance hat and make Mm -hmm. it work. What, or, and well, to backtrack a little bit, thinking about the education piece, it's definitely not that people don't or can't understand it. It's just the accessibility, 
where mm-hmm. it's not as available so you don't have the same access to resources that would help you get a real grip on what's happening. Where it's like me for all of the time I've spent in the space, I'm looking at what happened with the Luna and Terra thing over these last couple of days and learning so much new stuff that I had no idea was even going on. So especially in something like crypto too. So it's interesting just seeing like that kind of split. How did you get into trading options? Um, It was, I don't know. It was just, it was just pandemic and. um, Had to get to the bag. You know, I get yeah, it. I had to get to it. <laughs> And I had already, so I, I was in America for a while and I came down here in November the 11th, 2019. And that was like, right, a couple months before the pandemic. So then the pandemic happened while I was down here and I was like, oh, I'm going to just wait it out for like, you know, a couple months and see how it goes or whatever. Like, And then it's like, it's still happening. So, you know, just trying to figure out <clears throat> like, you know, what to do, how to get some money going while I'm here. Cause it's really, it's a beautiful place. I was I'm surrounded by family, friends and nature and all that all that beauty. Um but you know, that abundance like financially is really important as well. So I have to make it happen. There's this quote that I love that's like when faced I think it's in I'm not sure where it's from, but it's like when faced with the option of uh death or success most people choose success. So it's like, you know, just when, not that I was like dying, but like just transformation energy, like there's no, you know what I mean? Like there's no alternative to the situation. It's like, I'm here, so you gotta figure it out. Like, I don't feel like going back in the middle of this, the borders were closed, like I just had to be here. So it was like, okay, what you gonna do? That's a bar. Now that the now that the world and I always feel a little like hesitant to say this, like I'm gonna jinx something, but now that the world is opening back up, what are some of the sacred sites you have on your bucket list to go make music at? Definitely Pyramids of Giza, definitely um the Amazon, definitely Machu Picchu, definitely Thailand, um, you know, Yucatan, I, like the pyramids of the sun, pyramid of the moon in Mexico. I just like, like anywhere there's just some cool indigenous stuff that's still left over and anywhere that is really just has beautiful nature wonders like that's what i'm so to date to date where's the or where's your favorite place you've been able to make music at my favorite place (laughs) okay i mean it's it's really just just tobago for real for real like this is where i'm from this is it feels very it's like really sacred because i mean i know this is a boring answer i haven't I mean, I've been some places, but not everywhere. Um, yeah, this is this is where there's so much of me here. There's so much of my just ancestral lineage here. There's nature. There's trees. There's rainforest. There's beaches. There's I used to go to school, you know, 15 minutes away. You can just going back and connecting with certain things that I used to do as a child and just exploring different aspects and elements of the island that I maybe was not, um, you know, just aware of at a certain point because I moved to America when I was about eight. So, yeah, I don't know. This is my favorite place. I really want to go to Hawaii as well. I know that, you know. Okay, I was going to say, I feel like have you seen, yeah, have you seen like the last like, (laughs) <laughs> You're like, yeah, I don't know about it. I don't I, see, I don't know what now, to believe. Listen, my thing is, number one, 27% of Hawaii's economy is tourism. And I know that the indigenous people are the ones that are like, oh, tourists, please stop coming here. But it's really because they feel like a lot of the tourism dollars aren't going directly to them. 
but I am the type of person, like, that's where I'm going first. Like, that's why I'm here. Like, it's to connect with nature, it's to connect with the spirit of the, of the, the planet, the islands and the people. Like, that's, I'm not finna go to Hawaii and be like, where's your nearest cheesecake factory? Like, <laughs> I'm gonna be in Hawaii trenches. Like, <laughs> what's going on? What's really good in the community? So pulling up you know, to the Cheesecake Factory in Honolulu is nuts. <laughs> that is <laughs> such a <laughs> such a wild <laughs> image. That is that is a flagrant foul, flagrant two at that. Yeah, you're rejected. Get up out of here. I've been <laughs> I've been seeing the tweets, and to me, it's interesting hearing the percentage of tourism dollars that go into it because that's how I was kind of looking at it. Like, oh, okay, well. What else does the economy survive off of? It's like when the pandemic hit, there were a lot of places that struggled because their economies had become so reliant on tourism that without it, it created like massive gaps in funding and jobs. And so for people to stop going there, like what would that impact look like? But you have a great point about just choosing where to spend those uh those tourist dollars that you go. Why is actually one of the like most expensive places in the States to live surprisingly enough. And I know that because I went from New York to LA to San Fran. So it seems like I only, you just all the expenses. <laughs> yeah. nah, no, no, no flex at all. That's not, not what that was. <laughs> I think it was just like lifestyle. I'm like, Oh no, I want to live here. And big money get there. No, no, not at all. <laughs> Please. <laughs> I was born in Brooklyn. That one doesn't count. Hey, LA, LA was Brooklyn. the hookup. Oh, you, you what part of Brooklyn? I used to live in Flatbush. Like at a certain point oh, yeah. I used to live in, in Midwood Midwood, like on the other side. I I went to Brooklyn College for film production. And yeah. Brooklyn, fun times. Oh no, we we were pretty close. I'm downtown, like right by Barclays Center. Okay, okay. Uh, That's where I graduated. Oh yeah. So it was funny. I, my neighborhood, my neighborhood is called Borum Hill, and I had no idea that it was called that. And I was like 22 years old. I was just like, "What the? <laughs> what kind of? What kind of <laughs> gentrified <laughs> ass <laughs> name?" Like, wow, I've never heard of that. Yeah, that's what I said. And I looked on the, I looked on Google Maps and everything, and sure it was right there. And I was just like, nah, nah, "I don't know." Y'all got me. Mm-hmm. Y'all got me fucked up. Um, all right, I I digress. I digress. Mm-hmm. You've well, actually, maybe not. We can we can stay on that. Staying on neighborhoods, thinking about communities. How did you end up connecting with the amazing people over at Lit NFT Gang? Okay, so I think that all that happened was I popped into a Twitter space this one night. It was Jamie and Rem. And they were, I forgot what, yeah, they were talking about just NFTs in general. And they added me to the group chat. And that was, <laughs> that was it. And then, you know, <clears throat> we just started talking, <clears throat> excuse me, and just connecting good vibes, amazing people, amazing music. Um, Yeah, it was pretty simple. I'm excited to, you know, just meet them. <clears throat> meet everybody in New York. I'm pulling up to NFT NYC. Yeah. I don't know when I'm going to find time in NFT NYC. I, I genuinely imagine from like waking up to going to sleep, I'm going to be trying to connect with everyone. <laughs> I realize Listen, I've never you even have asked. Like, you said what? Oh, no, no. What happened? You go. I was just saying, you know, you should, or maybe, I don't know, like there should just be like a big central, like there is the official convention but then there's you know there's a good solid subgroup of like nfts music nfts and like just i feel like we should all just be in the same space and just have our own little unofficial convention you know yeah i'm 1000 percent never going to be at any official <laughs> nft nyc <laughs> events i don't know what the conference i didn't even look i went to I guess I didn't go, but la- the one that was in was the end of October, early November, but this last one, I didn't even realize the conference was going on. I genuinely had no idea. I thought they were just calling it NFT NYC because a bunch of Web3 people were in the city. And I'm like, oh, this is dope. And they're like, no, no, there's like an actual conference. And I was like, oh, who okay. the hell is going there? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to do 
very likely do a maybe one, maybe two, maybe three or four uh, live Money Trees episodes. Those whole that, that whole week, and because this is a talk show, it's it's on Twitter Spaces and it's on podcast platforms, but it is growing and will have a visual component sooner than later. And I think bringing it to life there would allow for me to meet face to face with some of my favorite guests, and then also just like. I don't know, get a little mixy after the episode before we go to whatever other events are happening. Um, I was talking on community building and thinking about how the fact that I had never, I actually, I don't know how lit NFT started. And now I'm interested to figure out, I'm imagining okay. it was Jamie's group. But, Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Holding it yeah. down. But, you know, Shout out to maybe, them. maybe if we just, you know, keep the air of mystery. And, you know, it can be just a mystery, like, hmm. Or, like, maybe that can be, like, a campaign, like, hmm, what's an NFT, a lit NFT? Or, like, maybe it started in a black hole or something. Like, there's just right, a certain... Right. The, the documentaries like, you, when you get the yeah. answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Like, it's a super cool, cool group of people. Yeah, so, speaking on the community piece and actually you know what i'm gonna jump because there was something else that i've just remembered you put me on to a book and you may not have realized you put me on to a book but you wrote a glowing recommendation about women who run with the wolves and yes. this had to have been the third person you, you had to have been the third person i've seen talk about this and so i had to go on amazon and i ordered it and it is now on my list but I just want to thank you for that because I love book recommendations. Oh why? It's an book. Yeah, I'll say why do you love that book so much? But then also, what is the last great book you've read? I love that book so much because I can turn to any random page at any moment in my life, and the words are just going to speak directly to me, like in this particular moment. And that's really cool to me. It's the book is about just the story, different stories over time and for folklores and and stuff about, you know, women and, and just the wildish nature of our souls and our spirits and just there's a lot of timeless wisdom and stories that go back so many, so many, so many years that have been just told over time. Some of them are told in different ways. And then the author, she brings in her, she's like a, I'm not sure if she's a psychiatrist, but she's into the psychology in some way as well. So she does a really great job of analyzing and, and getting into the symbolism of what things mean and bringing in her own personal life experiences and the, the life experiences of others as well. Listen, I'm down to pick a random page from this book right now and read something. There's a paragraph at least. Because hey, if you these. if you've got it next to you, go for it. I want to see what happens. I'm here for this live experiment. <laughs> okay. Then. Oh shit! If I can find it. Is it here? Yep. Oh. So real quick about this book. So I bought this book. Maybe like. 10 years ago, maybe eight, right before I was moving to New York to go to film school. And I was probably early, definitely the early 20s at the time. And I I was reading the book and it was really intriguing. And I was like, wow, this is so good. It's kind of hard for me to understand. Like my mind just wasn't fully on that level. Like I was grasping things, but it was just a lot for me to process in my like early 20 something world. And so then I started reading, I was like, damn, this is good. But <clears throat> I just like, you know, put it, put it off as I do with things sometimes. And every few years, like <laughs> I pick it back up again and read some here. And it's like, wow, this is really timely. And then I put it down and then I was putting, putting it down again. It's some, something similar to the story I was telling about, um, never too late. But this one night, I had a dream where this book, Women Who Run With The Wolves, it was like on this altar with like these candles around it. And the book was like really big, like massive. And I just woke up and I was like, oh, 
I guess it's time to read this book. And then I, I, that day I went and got the, I found the book. It was like, like the copy I have right now was like really old and like kind of tattered and like lots of, I don't know, it's just old. Um, but that day after the dream, I opened the book to a random page. I do this thing, it's called, Bibli- I call it bibliomancy, where I just, it's like divination, but just opening a random book and seeing what the message is for me. Um, so I opened to a random page. The random page was page 333. And it was talking about just when a woman's creativity is stifled. And then there's all these, like excuses and distractions and it's kind of like this river that gets polluted and it's like a river of creativity but then there's all these distractions and pollutions and and just skewed perceptions of things and it just talked about how it's important to like clean it up and get your creativity back in flow and like that's when I really started to like turn up with my music stuff so it was like just a really divine moment what an amazing precursor yeah, thank you. This, have you my life my life has some really I don't know, just the synchronicities be synchronizing, <laughs> if that makes sense. <laughs> um do you have a page open? Not yet. I'm gonna I'm just gonna pick a oh. random page and No, all good, all good. Not rushing the process. I I love the backstory. Mm-hmm. Got you. Hold on. Okay. Um <clears throat> this is page two hundred and six. It says, for years, women who carry the mythic life of the wild woman's archetype have silently cried, why am I so different? Why was I born into such a strange or unresponsive family? Wherever their lives wanted to burst forth, someone was there to salt to the ground so nothing could grow. They felt tortured by all the pro- by all the proscriptions against their natural desires. If they were nature, if they were nature children, they were kept under roofs. If they were scientists, they were told to be mothers. If they wanted to be mothers, they were told they better fit uh, the mold entirely. If they wanted to be mothers, they were told they'd, they'd better fit the mold entirely. If they wanted to invent something, they were told to be practical. If they wanted to create, they were told a woman's domestic work is never done. Should I keep reading or is that enough? It's a well, tell me, does that capture a emotion or feeling accurately from your life? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you know, I mean, we're kind of in the realm of like, it's personal and we're on a talk show, but, I, you know, I, I decided to open the book. I decided to talk about it. So we're here. Um, I would say that it's definitely timely. I think that, you know, my name is Carissa Visionary and I've always seen things differently and but that's not how that goes against the status quo that goes against what you know conventional people and some of these you know conventional energies have been people in my family and people that you know have been close to me in certain ways but a part of my life has been just coming into myself and and my my dominance as not dominance, but just my sovereignty and really being myself and not shrinking myself to fit into the mood of somebody else. Like I, I, I am me. Like if I was supposed to be somebody else, I would be somebody else. So just, it's been a process for me to just grow into myself and be comfortable walking in my own shoes. And, you know, sometimes that my tarnish relationships you have with family they look at you funny because they think like they see you how they've always seen you and when you start to change they'd be like hold on who's this why are you acting like that what's I didn't that's not how I raised you that's not what I taught you but I'm me I have a new perspective I've I, we didn't see the same things we didn't experience the same things we don't have the same thoughts we don't have the same perspectives or perception and so you know it's been just a journey when you care about people, you love people, they've been there for you in certain ways, but there's also that time to just be myself and, and branch out in my own perspective. Mm-hmm. And that's why I'm at with it. That's why that page popped up in this moment. We started on a vulnerable note with that incredible record. 
And we have ended on a vulnerable note with that incredible reflection. So, yo, thank you. Thank you for sharing on the space, sharing in this space and being open to being so personal. One, for even coming on the show. Like, this has been ill getting to know more about you and have seen you very active in the space and among some of our favorite community members and love the music when I had heard it. So it's been an honor getting to chop and learn more about what it is you do. Thank you I much. also am noticing that I have a slight typo that will be fixed. There's an exclamation point at the end of your name. And deservedly so. Carissa Thank Visionary. You. Said with emphasis. And I'll make sure that all future uh, notes <laughs> depict that. <laughs> I appreciate that. For sure. Carissa, before I let you go, there are two questions I ask every guest of the show. Mm-hmm. The first one is going to be, what is your seed phrase? Now I know. That's normally your account recovery key. I just don't think it's a scary enough security term. So here on Money Trees, we are repurposing seed phrase to be a saying, a quote, a slogan, a motto, a lyric that you live by that embodies your approach to your career, to your art, to your craft. Carissa Visionary, what is your seed phrase? My seed phrase is (laughs) – dramatic pause. Um, My seed phrase is all of the answers are within. That's it. There it is. The second question I ask every guest is what is the price of your one of one NFT going to be listed for? Um my one of one NFT. Okay, so you know, I'm at a place where I would like it to to go to somebody I know, somebody I care about, somebody that supports me. So I make it, you know, decently affordable, but I I'm certain it's going to be a million dollar or whatever the equivalent currency is at the time one day. So I'm just going to, I'm going to give the gift to early supporters of 0.01 E. 0.01. All good. There it is. Somebody Only for somebody that that cares for real, for real. If you if you don't care about me, if you don't if you can't name a lyric, you can't get it. Might have to add that in the description. Like, hey, yeah, <laughs> hey, yeah, hey, yeah. <laughs> um, yo, again, thank and you. I have a thank question you. for you. Oh. I have a question for you though. Yeah, what's what? up? I'm here. Okay, what what do you feel like is a better phrase aside from seed phrase for the account recovery phase? I mean, account recovery key works pretty well. Like. Mm. Like that, like that to me is like okay. <laughs> like at least that the you don't need the the softening of that. Like yo, this is your account recovery key. Do not lose this, or anybody can recover your account. Boom, mm-hmm. works works there. I'm not responsible for the for the crypto branding. I just know whoever said, and I get it because of like the seed and the technical term behind all of like what the, what the phrase actually is, but or the collection of words. It, you know, it's. I, I'm sure there's like some technical backings for it, but to me, it's just again, it doesn't scream security. So I don't know. Whoever came up with it, you were tasked with it. The responsibility was in your hand. And you phoned it in. I'm not here Actually. for it. Um, yo, again, thank you, thank you, thank you for pulling up. Wishing you a stressless rest of your day and a wonderful weekend. And I'm sure, or actually, and I'm looking forward to seeing more of your work and art in this space. And I'm sure we will continue to interact and not ironically build and grow here in Web3. Money Trees is the perfect place for shading. That's just, That's how, just it how it feels. <laughs> hey, I hope hey. that was in sync on the, uh, <laughs> on the recording. <laughs> Yo, oh, Ken- Kendrick's got a new album dropping tonight. It it's late. Cool. Oh, that's tonight. That's amazing. Wow. That's yep. exciting. Right. I'm I might kidding. have to stay up late past my bedtime. Mm-hmm. I ain't did that in a minute. But yeah, Kendrick can get that for me. Oh, man. Hi, right, Carissa. It's been great. Wishing you the best and talk to you later. Peace, peace, Thank peace. You. It's been my pleasure. Have an amazing rest of your day. <laughs>